Welcome to L3 Harris's Tech in 10, where you'll find some great STEM learning opportunities from our team of virtual volunteers who will like to teach you some cool things while you can't be in the classroom. I'm Lisa and I'm an electrical engineer. Today I'd like to show you how your computer works through an introduction to computer engineering. Now you may be asking yourself why someone like me, an electrical engineer, is going to be talking about computer engineering today, but when I was in school I studied electrical engineering and computer science. Now the field of computer engineering combines the hardware of electrical engineering with the software of computer science into a single degree. Now computer engineering gives the students a great opportunity to learn everything from the circuitry all the way to the software applications. So that goes from the physical hardware to the virtual aspects of software programs and applications. And as a computer engineer in the field, you can work anywhere along that spectrum. So from purely hardware designs like circuits, power supplies, microcomputers, all the way to purely software applications like operating systems, video game development, or application development. But one of the really unique fields of computer engineering is embedded systems, and that falls right in the middle of hardware and software. Now an embedded system is where you take a computer and embed it into a traditionally hardware-based system. So a good example of that would be a smart speaker. Now I think we're all familiar with a smart speaker where you can tell it to play music or check the weather or even read you your emails. So it takes a voice control and then translates it into a command that the computer can understand. Now traditionally, a speaker has been an analog device or a device that's made up purely of hardware. Now when you embed a computer into it, it becomes an embedded system. So now that purely analog device has the functionalities of a computer. And that allows you to do things like convert your voice into a software command and stream media from the internet, access your emails, and even tell you the weather. Now that you know a little bit more about computer engineering, let's take that and apply it to the computer that you're using to watch this video. Now computers, much like computer engineering, are divided into two main parts. You have your hardware parts and your software parts. Now if it was just hardware, you'd have nothing but electronics. And if it was just software, it would be purely a virtual system. So we need to combine hardware and software to make up a computer. So let's start with the hardware, since that's the outside of the computer or the part that you tend to interact with first. So the outside of the computer is called the case. Now, depending on the computer that you're using, that can take many different shapes. So for a desktop computer, the case is rather large and is typically called the tower. Now, if you're using a laptop, the case actually has an embedded keyboard and mouse in it. And for a smartphone and tablet, the case is just like the case that you may use to protect it. It's the outside. And then you interact with the computer through a touch screen. Now inside that case is a power supply. And depending on the type of computer you're using, it will change the way the power supply works. So if you're using a desktop computer, that has to be plugged into the wall to get power. And the power supply in a desktop computer converts that wall power into the voltages and powers that are needed by the components of the computer. Now, if you're using a laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone, the power supplies are a little bit different because they have to pull power from a battery. So you still have to charge that battery, which is why you still have to plug in a laptop or a smartphone or a tablet, but that power supply is able to take the power from the battery and then convert it to the voltages and powers needed by the components of the computer. So now where does all that power go? So inside every computer is a motherboard and the motherboard can take many shapes, sizes, and forms depending on the type of computer. But the motherboard is what takes care of all the other electronics, hence why it's called the motherboard. And the motherboard is what distributes the signals and power that control all the other aspects of your computer. Now on board the motherboard is your central processing unit or your CPU. Now the CPU is the brain of the computer that runs all of the processes and programs. Now the CPU isn't very big. Even on a desktop computer, it's only about an inch squared. 
and it's rather delicate and gets very, very hot when it's running. So if you've ever seen the insides of a computer, you'll typically see a very large fan, especially on a desktop computer. And that fan is actually glued to the CPU using special metallic glue to keep the CPU cool while it's running. Now the colder that CPU is, the more efficient the computer will run. Now the CPU runs all the processing programs, but they have to be stored somewhere. So that's where memory comes in. And there are two forms of memory on a computer. You have random access memory and you have your hard drive or your hard disk drive. If you're using a desktop computer and some laptop computers, the hard drive will actually have physical disks in it. They look a little bit like really thick, small CDs. If you're using a smartphone or a tablet, you have a solid state drive, which is more like a giant flash drive. Now, you may ask yourself, why do we have two kinds of memory? Well, the answer is speed. So random access memory is your computer's short-term memory. Things that are stored in the RAM are only remembered as long as the RAM has power. So if you've ever had your computer crash or unexpectedly shut down, and then everything you were working on has disappeared, that's because it was stored in RAM. So when the RAM loses power, it forgets everything that, it was, that was stored in its memory. Now, obviously when you power cycle your phone or your desktop, your laptop, it remembers programs and things that you've saved. That's because those are saved on the hard drive. Now your hard drive is your computer's long-term memory. Even if the power is removed, things in the hard drive are still remembered until you go in and delete them. Now outside of this is your peripherals. These are all the extra things you can plug into your computer, like a CD or DVD drive, a flash drive, a printer, or even a set of speakers. Now the peripherals can interface with your computer over a couple of different ports. Typically now, those are USBs, but it used to be serial ports or even PS2 ports if you have a very old computer. Now all these peripherals need software to run. So that leads us into the next topic of a computer, which is software. Now software in computers comes in three levels. So you have your operating system, your drivers, and your applications. Now if someone's ever asked you, you know, what kind of laptop do you use? You typically answer with, oh, I have a Windows, or I have a Mac, or I have a Linux or a Unix system. That's actually the operating system, not the computer itself. So the computer hardware is the same type regardless of the operating system being used. They're still going to have motherboards and CPUs and hard drives and power supplies, but the operating system is what makes the user experience different. Now, as I said, you have all these different peripherals that you can plug into a computer, but they might not speak the same language as your operating system. That's where drivers come in, and a driver acts as a translator between the peripheral and your computer. Without a driver, you could plug something in and the computer would have no idea how to talk to it, or give it commands, or receive data from it. So you have to put the drivers in so that the whole system can work together. Finally, you have applications. Now applications are the software programs that we think of when we think of software. And an application can be anything from a word processing program all the way to a video game or a script. Now a script tends to be a very short program whereas a word processor, a video game, has a user interface which makes it a little bit more complex. Now writing applications is pretty much endless. You can create a program to do anything that you can think of in many, many different languages. And the first program anyone writes is Hello World. So if you're interested in learning about programming and applications, just look up how to write Hello World programs and you'll find tons of great examples. So I hope this video today gives you a little bit of background about computer engineering and some of the information about the computer that you're using today to watch this video.